watching ABC4 News celebrating 75 years. Welcome back. Utah's main rail line is celebrating a big birthday today. On this day, 15 years ago, the front runner started service between Salt Lake City and Ogden. This project took years to get off the ground, but has now expanded to Provo to connect most of the Wasatch Front on one commuter rail line. So joining us today to help us understand this momentous occasion and a look at what's next, we have UTA's Executive Director, Jay Fox. Jay, thank you so much for stepping away and talking to us about this. Uh, thank you for having me here. So it's a really exciting day for, for the entire agency. We're, we're really happy to be part of this 15th celebration. It, it's a big deal. So first of all, Congratulations to you Thank and you. the whole UTA team. I think a lot of people take for granted really what the front runner does, especially for people new to Utah. So can you yeah. talk a little bit about what it took to get this going in 2008? Yeah, actually, I, I'll go even further back. I mean, this, this railroad actually has a 150 year history. It was Brigham Young that uh, you know created the uh, Utah Central Railroad. And that's the line we run on today. And, uh, uh, you know, uh, a long time ago, well, a little bit longer than 15 years ago, we bought um, our section of the rail from the Union Pacific and uh, created this uh, wonderful commuter rail line uh, that ultimately became 83 miles that, you know, connects this region in a way that uh, if you look at any similar size population uh, centers across the country, you know, we, we have it really great. It, it really is something. I mean, you said 83 miles. How how yeah. did the scope of this project grow over that time? Yeah, well, it, originally it was uh, the first portion was Salt Lake to Ogden. Um, and that uh, we acquired that right away back in, uh, I think, 2002. And then uh, we were able to open the southern portion. And actually, we continue to look north and south uh, beyond our 16 stations that we have right now. Uh, as well as increasing our double tracking to make uh, make it more convenient for people every day. So uh, during this time, th these 15 years, I, I can imagine there were some growing pains, maybe some surprises along the way. What might surprise people about the history of the front runner? Um, I think the biggest thing that would surprise them is, um, how, well, you know what? I would say how fast it became uh, popular. That is, you know, the, the cars began to fill up very, very quickly. And, you know, we, uh, we have something called in the business called crush load, which is, you know, when you, you get to that point where, you know, there's no room to sit and every every little space is taken up. And, uh, you know, prior to the pandemic, we were seeing them regularly. You know, people have been taking this in. So I think the growing pains are around, you know, making sure that we have the operating team to keep moving uh, these trains. And, and I would say the greatest thing about that growing pain is even though we have a limited number of double track, you know, just have a little bit of space uh, to move two trains past each other. We're 90% on time, hmm. and that's it's amazing. For only 25% double tracking, we're 90% on time. So it sh shows you, in terms of growing, how effective the team has been in, in moving these trains along. Yeah, a lot of collaboration, I'm sure. What what can we expect for the future of this? Yeah, the biggest thing we're doing now, which is both a state-funded project and is actually in the uh, president's budget, federal budget, is what's known as the strategic double tracking project. That will double the amount of double tracking we have. And then we're going to be able to run in the peak every 15 minutes instead of every 30 minutes. And that makes it super convenient for people. You're driving up, that train's pulling away. You know that it's only 14 minutes till the next one comes. It's you know that much more likely to, to have somebody hang around and stay on our platform. And so as part of that, we're going to have additional cars, hopefully uh, maybe propelled uh, by electric or hydrogen. We'll see. We're working on that now. And then on top of that, here's the best part, uh, Sunday service. Right mm -hmm. now, we can't run on Sundays because we have so little double tracking. Our guys can't get out there uh, during the week. But when we have that additional double track, it means Sunday service. And whenever we run Sunday service, it goes through the roof. We have just so many people on our on our system. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of people will appreciate that. Uh, Jay Fox, yeah. thank you so much for joining us and congratulations again. Uh, thank you on behalf of everybody. I really appreciate it.